This video will cover the topic of cross-correlation. This is section 5.6 of Wessel's notes. It also draws from a section in Davis, Davis's textbook in chapter 3. Now we've looked at autocorrelation, which is a technique to look for cyclicity or patterns in a single sequence or time series of data. Cross-correlation is a very similar technique to look at patterns or uh, similar similarities in patterns or cyclicity between two different sequences or two times two different time series so the example that davis gives uh, deals with data from the rocky mountain arsenal this was a chemical weapons manufacturing plant in denver colorado at the uh, front range of the rocky mountains it was active for I guess about 50 years ending in the early 90s. And um, a byproduct of the chemical manufacturing was massive volumes of wastewater. And uh, they they needed to dispose of that. And so the logical thing to do was to inject the wastewater into the basement rock, which they started doing in 1961. So... Um, here is a record of the um, volume of water injected each month uh, in millions of gallons for about a four-year period. And um, so besides the environmental impacts, which are long-lived and still ongoing, there were some short-term impacts. And those included uh, a, an elevation in seismicity or the number of earthquakes in Denver, uh, simply because, well, unfortunately, the well intersected a shear zone along a, a fault of the front range, and that produced a lot of micro seismicity in the Denver area. So, so this is a record of the number of earthquakes in the same months, uh, each month, over the same time period. So the obvious question is, um, is there a relationship between the volume of water pumped into the ground and the seismicity? Right. So to answer that question, we could do you could imagine we could just um, compute the correlation coefficient between each uh, each data set. And as we've uh, we've looked at correlation, we could that involves visually you can you can imagine plotting wastewater volume versus seismicity, and look for any linear trends, and that can be quantified with this correlation coefficient. But suppose there's a delay or lag between the pumping and size seismicity by doing a straight correlation coefficient to the two records as is, we might not see a significant correlation, whereas there could be one if there is a delay between the two. So the obvious thing to do then is to compute the correlation coefficient for different lags or time shifts. And 
so the correlation as a function of time shift is simply the cross correlation function. So again, we let's talk about how to do that. So we have two data sequences. We have x, and uh, I'll, I'll use i to denote each measurement. And that, for example, could be pumping rate, or really, yeah, I guess pumping rate. It's really volume per month, which is what we have as our data set. And the other record is the seismicity, the number of earthquakes per month. Now, if X and Y are coincident measurements, and they both have the same record length, then the cross correlation, the equation describing cross correlation, is just like the equation describing autocorrelation, but with um, one variable being X and the other variable being Y. So writing out that equation, we could describe the correlation coefficient as a function of lag, tau. And we have a numerator which, in which the record length being compared is n minus tau. And we have the sum over i of xi times y lagged by a number, tau number of steps minus the sum of xi times the sum of the lagged values of y. So that's the numerator of our correlation coefficient. And the denominator represents the square root of two variances, the first of which is the variance of x over the range of data, range of the data sequence being examined. And the second is, or it's really proportional to the variance of the lagged y values over the range being compared. So if you compare this equation to your equation for autocorrelation, the similarity should be obvious. And I forgot, I should mention that the sum is over i equals 1 plus tau to n, the to, to the end of the data record. So it turns out that the data sequence um, of the Rocky Mountain Arsenal, uh, are they, they are coincident. They both are measured at the same time, at the end of the month. And the records are, um, are the same length. So we can use this equation. And let's look at the example. So the solid curve is the record of pumping. And um, the red curve is the record of seismicity. And since I show them on the same plot, um, they, they have very different scales. So I've just normalized them by the maximum value in each record. So the maximum value corresponds to 1. And of course, the minimum value, well, 0 is always 0 uh, here as well. OK, so without any lag in time, we get a relatively high positive correlation. Uh, it looks like it's around points, a little over 0.6 or so. So as we apply a lag, the you can see that I'm shifting the seismicity function um, later in time. 
um, relative to the pumping record. And with increasing lag, you can see the correlation starting to decrease until there is very little correlation in the record. Uh, so that was a case in which the, again, the seismicity record was shifted forward in time. Now, remember, the autocorrelation function, it didn't matter which way we shifted one record relative to the other, the autocorrelation function was symmetric. And that was simply because we were just looking at this same record compared to a shifted version of that record. Here we have two different records, so it does matter which direction the records are shifted. So if we start again at zero lag and shift the red curve, the seismicity curve, to the left, we get a, a non-symmetric behavior for this correlation coefficient. And if I wasn't clear before, this is cross-correlation as a function of, uh, of lag or sh forward shift, this time in months um, of the red curve relative to the uh, black curve. So as I'm shifting it to the left, the lag is negative. And you can see that uh, the correlation actually went up a little bit as we shifted um, sh shifted to the left, and now it's going back down. So looking at the behavior of this cross-correlation function, it looks like the peak correlation occurred about uh, one to two months in shift, meaning that I had to shift the seismicity curve back in time by one to two months, indicating that there appears to be a significant well, a lag in the responsive seismicity to pumping, and that lag is one to two months or so. So again, again, the equation I just drew out for you applies to the special case in which the two data sequences are coincident. They're measured at the same time, and both have the same length. But that's not generally the case. Uh, it, the more general case is a situation in which the um, the the data are not collected th at the same time, and they have different lengths. So the start time for y may be very uh, different from x. And in that case, then you have to look to Wessel's equation, uh, section or equation 5.49. Uh, it has a similar form. But in this case, n represents the number of points of overlap. over the record being compared. And also, the start point of y, or in other words, what defines i equals 1, when or where i equals 1 is arbitrary and controls or what defines the lag. OK, so the equation looks very similar to the one that I drew out. Uh, the sum is from 1 to n, where 1 to n represents the the band in the record where the overlap is occurring. And the start point of y is uh, defined by the lag. So each time you compute um, r for a different lag, you have to redefine what i equals 1 is for y. And so this is the equation for uh, um, the general case for cross-correlation, and the main requirements. So the main requirements are that the 
interval in time or space between the measurements must be uniform in both records, and that interval must be the same between the two records. And the little m here, as Wessel describes, that's what defines the match point. So that's what defines, I guess, that's what defines what I, where i is equal to 1. The point, the first point of the Y array being uh, correlated with the X array, for example. So let's return to our original question. Is there a, a relationship between the volume of wastewater pumped and the seismicity? Well, it looks like there is, but to rigor, rigorously test whether there is, we have to do a simple test, and, and this test will be a t-test, much, very much like the t-test used for the simple linear correlation. So here we're going to test for significance. of our cross correlation function. And I'll just stick with my terminology here. R is a function of lag. And the T value is R at a given lag times the square root of the length of the two records being compared. In this case, it's n minus tau. Well, this is for the special case in which the records are coincident. Minus 2 divided by 1 minus rm, sorry, r tau squared. OK, so that's how we compute t. So for our Rocky Mountain Arsenal example, let's define alpha at 5%. The critical T value is T at 1 minus alpha over 2 at uh, with numbers of degrees of freedom of n minus tau minus 2. So we convert our cross-correlation record r sub tau to t value as a function of lag, and then compare that to the critical t value. And that's done here. So here is my t values for my correlation, cross-correlation function. The, um, the solid bars are plus and minus the critical value. And again, remember that as I, as I, um, apply different size lags to my function, the zone of overlap, which is this light blue region, also changes. So near the ends of this, of this cross-correlation plot, the actual overlap is smaller. And so the critical T value tends to increase, although the increase here is so small you can't even see it. The, the range is between about uh, 2.02 at zero lag to about 2.05 at large lag um, for this uh, number of point, this relatively large number of data points. So this shows that you know over a per these these uh, peaks uh, near one, well actually zero, one and two months of lag. Um, and actually some to the side are significant. So the, this region indicates that there's a significant correlation at the 5% level between the two records, and the lag is a couple, couple of months or so. OK, so I'm going to conclude. This concludes my, this video on the cross-correlation.